Hey, it's Don the Osher Professor here. Today I'm going to give you another bolo. It's going to be something really odd. Um, it's live plants. And I know people think it's crazy, but just hear it out here. We'll cross over to the screen in just a second here and just take a look at what I'm talking about. In the past, we've sold things such as seeds and things like that. There is a lot of money in these. These are something you can grow over and over and over and over again and make money on. It's something you can do on your own. It's something you don't need to buy. So just keep that in mind. There's tons of people who do actually plants and sell plants as a living. So we're going to cut over the screen and we're going to show you some right now. Um, so here's the first item. Now, I know it sounds strange to sell plants over eBay. We have bought live plants from eBay. We have actually sold live plants on eBay as well, too. We have sold all kinds of things. Back when we um, used to go to some of these specialty food markets, we found a horned melon, it was called. And it's still called that. It, it's a funky thing. It's got like spikes all over it. And what we did is we actually took the seeds out and we were selling five of the seeds out of one of these horn melons that we paid $3 for and then we ate them and we were getting 10 bucks for five seeds when these just hit the market. And we would save every one we had so we could literally just buy these things and throw them away if we really wanted to and still quadruple our money or better. I know it may not sound like a huge profit, but one of these melons would give you, say, 60 seeds or so. So, you know, it's, it's enough to say, hey, you're going to make some money out of that. So just take that into consideration. And we bought every one they had. Whenever they came in, we dried out the seeds. We did the whole works. It was just something extra. The wife wanted to mess with it. We planted some. We even sold some live uh, plants of this same horn melon. So anyway, that's just a touch on that from what we've done. So, And there's other things we've done too. But plants alone like this one here, it's Texas Living Rock Cactus. Living rocks are very popular. There's some that sell for say 500 to 1,000 for one single individual plant. And I'm going to show you some here. And again, there's people that just do this for a living. That's all they do. They don't have a business. They don't have a store. They literally grow plants. Or there's others that grow fish and, you know, breed fish and all these other things. We had a, a, a family member who actually bred discus fish and fighting fish. And he made a lot of money on it. I mean a lot of money. So anyway, $1,200 for this one here. I'll just flip through a few here. This is the basically the same thing. It's a different amount of them. The other one was 80. This is 50. This is $1,100. And these things, you know, they propagate. You can actually plant one and it will separate and we'll have more than just that. We do um, jade plants and stuff here for our own use and we have them all over the house. And that's another kind of thing that you can do. You can do clippings from one plant. So you could buy one plant and turn it into three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it keeps expanding and sell them as they grow. So I know that sounds crazy to some people, but it, it's a viable market, I promise you. I don't remember the, the ruling on Amazon, but on eBay, it's just open game on most of these. There are some that are banned, uh, some plants, and some that are restricted due to hallucinogenic effects, um, like Angel Trumpet or something along that line. There's certain ones you can't do. So anyway, 698 for this group of only 16 now. And now here's um, uh, this, I think this is maybe in the jade family or something along that one. I'm not even going to begin to pronounce the name. This one plant went for $3,200. It's succulent again. It's a jade plant basically then as a succulent. Jade's a succulent. The living uh, stones are a, a form of succulent as well too. So there's a lot of these that sell for a lot of money. You can trim these up. You can split them apart at the roots and you can separate them into multiple plants and then you sell the multiple plants after they've grown. This isn't something you can just pop into for the most part. There are some plants that you can grow readily um, and then just, uh, you know, within a couple months have enough to sell. But for the most part, it's something that's going to take you six months, a year to get set up on these. But there's people, again, that do this, that make $100,000, $200,000 a year just selling plants. And I'm going to show you some here that are making over $100,000 a year just selling plants in just a few minutes here. And they're just selling them on eBay, nowhere else. So anyway, next one here. Um, just another grouping here. Now, I think these are, um, yeah, these are a, a form of cactus, if I'm agave, marv. Now, I'm not even sure what that is. There's some plants on here that are banned that they don't tell you that. So just pay attention and uh, make sure you know what you're buying on some of these. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you'd have to go into the different details on this. I don't know this plant at all, but $2,275, 18 bids. 
It's from Netherlands too. So some don't grow here in this country. Now, here's the primo ones here. The the bonsai trees. Any of these trees. Now, bonsai, I really get. I enjoy bonsai. There's a place in Michigan called Hidden Lake Gardens that has a huge collection of vintage bonsais. Some of them are 70, 80, 100 years old. The older the tree, the more it's worth. The, the, the whole goal of a bonsai is to make a tiny little miniature tree look like a giant tree. Look like it's a, a full-grown, full-size, 100, 150-foot tree in miniature. I love miniatures. I love models. So this I've always liked. I like when they put them in little gardens and the cascading versions and when they have like ruins and things like that in the actual vase. I really, really, really like bonsai. We've had a few here in the house. They're very hard to grow, but if you get the knack, you're able to do it and you have the patience, you can make a lot of money. It's going to take you years to get established with bonsai. Now there's some bonsais that grow faster than others, so there are some that would be more lucrative than others. This one went for $1,900. And it literally looks like a miniature full-sized tree that someone shrunk with a shrunk ray, I guess you could say. Uh, again, I love the miniature plants. Uh, next one here now, again, I don't know all of these, but this is another form of living rock. Not even going to try to pronounce the name. Living rocks are always on the top of what sells. Um, they're harder to get. If you know how to grow them, you can grow them in your garage. You can grow them in a basement. You'll need lights, heat, the whole works. But these are something that you can honestly do. Again, there's people that grow like um, shiitake mushrooms at their house. There's people that grow um, all kinds of other things. There's people that truffle hunt. There's people that ginger hunt. There's... There's people that harvest wild things like that, too, legally, that you can turn around and resell. Some wild ginger and things like that are banned. It can't be done in certain parks. So, And some of it would be considered stealing in some parks, and it would be a crime. So just keep that in mind when you're out looking for stuff like this. There's even pine cones from certain trees that you can sell for the seeds in the pine cones. So $1,944 on this one. This one looks like a jade, but it has concave uh, nodes at the end of the, the, the leaves, I guess you could say. So it's a different variety. $1,725. The rooted ones, obviously, you can put a jade just in dirt and it will grow um, roots. It's just one of those plants that's easy to grow. You can also kill it very easily, too, if you're not paying enough attention or you water it too much. Jades are very hardy. Even when it looks like they're going to die, they'll come back. And you can trim them. You can cut one stalk into two and have two plants from jades. This is probably the same basic thing. Uh, and the next one here... Another awesome bonsai. Now, juniper are what I see a lot of because they're easy to grow compared to some other ones. It looks like a wind-blown um, ancient tree that's sitting on the side of a hill. That's the look it's supposed to give. There's a whole philosophy with this. And you can see how big the actual um, trunk is at the bottom. It's very big compared to the actual size of the tree. That's what you want. The bigger the trunk, the older the tree, the more it usually is worth. Now, there's... This one says 1742, which very well could be the case because some of these are passed down into the family from Japan. There's, they're, they're actually willed to other people for centuries sometimes. A lot of people aren't aware of that. And if you go to a place like this Hidden Lake Gardens in, in Michigan, you can see some old, old ones. You can see some. It's like a museum almost of plants, and they have many greenhouses connected together, so you can walk into different environments all year round, depending, you know, what's open that time. But but you can walk into these different environments all year round. It's really an enjoyable experience. This one's $1,725. This is another one. Now, this is a Korean hornbeam. I'm not sure on what this is, but it's basically the same thing. It's a um, another bonsai. Uh, it, they're showing it with and without the leaves because it's a normal tree, so it's going to lose its leaves if it's the kind of tree that would normally lose it. doesn't matter the size. It's the same basic principle. So it would be in hibernation during part of the year, just like a normal tree would be. And you can see how old this is just by looking at the size of the stalk. It's basically trimming and bending, putting wires in braces that force the tree to grow in a certain direction, stunting its growth. When you trim off the top of one branch, lower down on that same branch, and any, most plants do this, it'll spread out. I used to raise um, tomatoes with my family. We used to plant stuff in the yard, and we'd have tons of tomatoes out there. And if you snip them off at the top, they get bushier. And that's what a bonsai does. That's what a lot of plants do, as I said. So anyway, 1945 bucks. 
I, again, I just love the bonsai. Now, here's a seed grown. I don't even know what this is. Nepenthes. Now, again, I'm sure I butchered the name. It looks like it's well taken care of. It's some kind of pitcher plant, probably that, you know, that, that um, digests insects would be my guess. 1534. Now, we've had Venus fly traps and pitcher plants and all. Even those you can sell at certain times of the year for a minor profit. It's just not worth it selling online. Locally wise, you can sell things like that at, at flea markets and things like that, too. So... Another really nice looking one. I love the miniature little leaves that come off some of the plants. Now that's the key to get the leaves, to get a certain plant. That's why they pick only certain types of trees and plants to turn into a bonsai. The fruit ones are my favorites because, you know, some of them have stunted growth for the actual fruits too. And it just looks like a little miniature uh, orange tree or apple tree or something along that line. This one is really awesome. I really love this one here. In all honesty, you know, if I had the patience and, and the extra time, we'd probably have a couple around the house just for sheer aesthetics of the item. It's really neat looking. And they put, you know, fawns and little moss and things at the bottom there to actually make it look more like it's just a, a shrunken tree kind of thing. It's like a little mini environment, like a diorama uh, of sorts is what I would call it. So 1195. Here's another one here. Now, this is a blooming... Um, I'm not even, it's an apricot. There we go. It's an apricot. We had an apricot in our backyard in, in Mississippi, so I always loved them. They've just trimmed it off. You can see the, the fresh cuts on these. Uh, those flowers are where the apricots come from. So you can see how old it is just by looking at the size of the actual trunk. That's a huge trunk for the size of the tree. Um, now here's a really neat one too. It looks like a big old tree like you'd see in the haunted forest somewhere. Rather interesting one here. The better ones, the ones that I see that sell for a little more are ones that um, actually have leaves on them in one photo and then they, they can show without leaves. So you can see both stages of the plant. That always seems to go better. You have to look in advance and think in advance to do that though. So, um, But this one's really cool. It just looks just typical. It's out of the pot, as you can see. The roots are still down at the bottom. Now, they'll trim the roots in some cases. And again, as I said, they bend the, the branches to look like how they want them to do. They'll twist them into shapes. The cascading one overflows off the pot and falls downward. There's different varieties of them. Scapes, and there's some with stones that are attached to stones and rocks. And It's really an interesting hobby, honestly. $1,300. Now, we're going into some here. These are folks that make a living off of some of this. Now, this one's a nursery, but there's others on here that only do this for selling on eBay. This is a black uh, bamboo. It's it's a rare one as well, too. They sold five at 1000 bucks. Buy it now. No making offers. So 5000 bucks. We had bamboo. It grows in Mississippi, if you're unaware. And some of the bamboo grew like a foot a day. And they turned into huge stands of like 40-foot uh, bamboo that are real close together. We had some friends that had a huge bamboo uh, patch in their yard that encompassed like, I don't know, a couple hundred square feet. It just took over the whole area. It was really cool um, to see. It was an interesting sight, honestly. So I do appreciate that type of thing. So $5,000 worth, five of them at $1,000 a pop. Here's another example. Now, these are living rocks, basically. Um, huge size, three units. You're getting three of these. This is all you're getting, three of these. And they're not very big. This is big for living rocks. These are only about an inch across each. Each. That's large for these. They sold 91 of these at $1,000 a piece. That's $91,000. One seller, one plant, one item. So, you know... Just something to take uh, take into consideration here, too. There's many of them to do. The flowering ones are just awesome because the rocks almost like split. And some of them are glossy and it looks like a shiny rock. It's even the same color as a rock. And until it actually starts to bloom, you'd never even know it was a plant. And then it opens up and then the flower comes out. I've seen them in many, many different places. Um, you know, they're just really cool plants, too, these living rocks. But again, $91,000 on that one. Here's another bonsai. This person has two of them. Um, Golden Gate Fucus. Um, rather interesting either way. Leaves are a little bigger than some I've seen. It's a younger one. You can tell by the actual uh, trunk on it. $1,000. He sold one. He still has one more. So, you know, it, it's just an interesting item. Here's a perfect example of a dwarf apple. 
Unfortunately, see, you can see the apples dwarfed on it too. Now, apple uh, trunks, I have an uncle who has an apple orchard and they do uh, cider certain times of the year and people come in and they do pumpkin picking and things like that at, at his farm. He's got a farm out there. So I love the smell of apples. This is small for an apple of any kind. Um, they're, they're stunted. They're, their growth is stunted. And this is 35 to 40 years old. So apple trees, if you're unaware, are harder to tell the age on because they don't get as big on the trunk. Most of the fruit trees don't anyway, at least like this style here. So anyway, 860 bucks for this one. This one's really cool too. Um, it's like a sensitive plant, like a fern of some type rain tree um they're just interesting in general and the ones that i love the most are the ones that have that mossy look to the actual trunk it looks like moss is growing up like you'd see it in a forest and they've put a, a scenery scene behind it so it kind of looks like it's a real tree i mean that's the whole goal on on these type of things 850 bucks now there's people that grow these for a living they'll rush them in growth so in a year or two they can have it enough or a size enough to actually sell them and they might have a thousand ready at the same time for a couple hundred bucks at a pop you know and you constantly have cycles just like farming anything else so and this is a massive one here too tons of apples on this one these people took care of this it takes a lot to to nurture a tree like this to produce that much fruit in that much space with you know it's eaten up a lot of its its um nutrients so just consider that when you're looking at something like this the more fruit on a tree like this the better now chances are it would be terrible to eat um, some of the oranges though i've seen that actually taste pretty good believe it or not now here is a dwarf orange now this is a cascade i think it even yeah cascade style where it pours over and it like flows it cascades off of the thing so it's not growing up it's hanging down and then growing up it's a whole different style of it and they do these in any kind you can imagine it's it's contortioning the the plant and twisting it up and making it something that it's not it's an artistic form of, of this type of, of work. It's just awesome in my book. I mean, I love nature, so I love these type of things. 720 bucks. You can see the oranges too on there too. I'm sure these do not look like they would taste very good. Here's a, um, it's some sort of, it says crown of thorns. Now, I'm not sure up on exactly what this is. My grandmother had some sort of pitcher plant that only bloomed like once every 70 some odd years. And it was inherited from her grandparents, mind you. It's been in the family for hundreds of years. It was actually donated to a botanical garden um, when she passed. But it bloomed once in my life and it smells just horrid when it blooms. Now, there's some that smell like dead bodies. This isn't one of them. It's some other oddball thing. It grows one single bloom and it, it maybe it's a centennial plant or something along that line. Maybe that sounds, it rings a bell. But it grew some huge one single stalk of a flower. And then it, when it, it was done, it died and had some seeds or something. It was a really interesting plant. 796 on this one. And the last one, just another bonsai. Now, this is really neat because it's almost like a little stand of trees. Very good job. I love the rocks. The, the leaves on the bottom kind of set it off. It makes it look like a, it's fall and this thing has some leaves falling off. It spreads out enough to be very appealing on this one here. Um, and it says it's sign. That's because some, there's, there's specific artists that do bonsai better than anybody else. You know, it, it's, it's an art in Japan. It, and it should be an art anywhere in my book because it, it takes a lot to do this. It's not, not just farming. It, there's so much more involved. You could trim it too much. You could twist it too much. You could break something. You could constrict it. You might put too much feed or a fertilizer in it, not enough. There's so many reasons why these do not survive over watering, wrong kind of pots. Um, there's just so many different things you have to know about these. But that's about it for, for bonsai and plants in general. Look into it. There's plants that routinely people sell for 50 bucks that you can grow in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Look into it. There's seeds from plants that you could grow just enough to get the seeds and then just sell the seeds. Not common plants, but again, if you buy one and you have a green thumb and you're good with plants, it's something you enjoy. You have to enjoy something like this to make it work for you. It, it's, it's a given with something like this. This is a labor of love for people who do this. They love what they do. I love the trees. I just don't have the patience, I guess, these days to do it. So anyway, that's, that's about it. Well, there you go. There's another item we look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.